Hey guys, it's great to see you again. I'm Ms. Sholee and I'll be your visual artist for this lesson. Today, we're gonna talk about a part two of a two-part lesson on volcanoes. Uh, this one is about geysers and volcanoes. Uh, and we're gonna focus on geysers uh, found on Earth and notice the differences between the two. Uh, today, we're gonna use line, color, and shape uh, to illustrate a cross-section of geysers. Today we're going to need a sheet of paper, pencil, eraser, and a box of crayons. Yellowstone National Park is famous for its geysers. It is home to half the world's known geysers. It is mostly in Wyoming with parts extending in Idaho and Montana. Let's take a look at the map and see where in the United States Wyoming is. And look in Wyoming and you see that very top left corner. That is where Yellowstone National Park is. Let's view the Yellowstone National Park map. The geyser called Old Faithful is well known in Yellowstone National Park. Here you can witness it erupt at the Old Faithful Visitor Center. It was named Old Faithful for being trustworthy and reliable. You can count on it erupting several times each day. It hurls hot water 150 feet into the air every, say, 35 to 120 minutes. This eruption has hot water and steam shooting up from the inside of the earth unto its surface. Geysers are a rare geologic event where water seeps down through the cracks into the crust and meets up with hot rocks. When water touches the hot rocks, it turns into steam. Heat causes the liquid water to become steam. Water in a gas state. It's kind of like the steam from a hot soup. The more water seeps, the more steam is created and pressure begins to build. Eventually, all the heat and pressure forces the steam to find a way back out. The pressure causes geysers to erupt. It's another type of volcanic activity a buildup and release of pressure underground. With geysers, we have steam and water spewing up. And with volcanoes, we have lava, which spews out of the earth. Volcanoes and geysers are similar yet different. They have two things in common. They are the earth's way of releasing heat and pressure from deep underground they tell us about history of the earth, of course. And number two, all volcanoes and geysers are extremely hot. Keep a safe distance and admire them from afar. Okay, a geyser is a place where steam and hot water erupt from the earth. A hot spot is a place where there's lots of volcanic activity. Hot spots um, is uh, where they have lots of magma close to the surface. But in Yellowstone, the magma has stayed underground and it's not erupting into the surface. So let's think about this. Volcanoes and geysers, they're like, they both have eruptions caused by heat and pressure inside the earth and they are both over hot spots. They're different because a volcano erupts and has lava, ash, and gas. And a geyser's eruption has steam and hot water. Geysers and other geothermal features are signs of a slumbering supervolcano below the park. Many geysers are relatively small. 
they spurt and bubble all day long in the water, in pools or springs with bluish green colors created by certain minerals. In Yellowstone, you find mud pots, hot springs, pools, lakes, and it's also even home to three giant waterfalls. You can also go wildlife watching for bison, gray wolves, and bears, giant prismatic springs, measure 370 feet across, making it the world's third largest hot spring. Microorganisms that thrive in 160 degree Fahrenheit water tint the pool a vivid red-orange. All right, let's go ahead and start our artwork. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write our name on our artwork. All right. Um, again, we're doing this about geysers found on Earth. So we're going to use lines and colors and some shapes to create a cross section of our geyser. We're going to need our paper, our pencil. I'm going to go ahead and use the marker because that way uh, you can see it. And a little cup of crayons. These, these are the ones I decided I'm going to probably use the most. I'll just pull them out where I can grab them easy. I like to use the little broken pieces a lot, so I have them here. Okay, so we have our paper. And um, I'm going to go ahead. We'll start from the very bottom of this one. Remember last week? We did the volcano, and remember the vol this is the magma here in the volcano. It, it passes upwards and it spills out, and when it goes outward, it turns into lava. So here's our volcano, and here we're going to have our geyser. Now, uh, if you want to add other things besides the geyser, like a mud pot and all that, um, and uh, springs and such, you can, but we'll add them uh, when I wait till, till after we get our geyser done and that situated and then we get to add other things so um, actually I'm gonna do more than one geyser here we're gonna have our cone geyser in the middle of our paper but at the very bottom here this is what starts it all it's our magma that's down here so I'm gonna give this whole big area that's gonna be where my magma is it's way deep down in the ground. And then let's see, I don't know how to say this is just a layer of soil, dirt, and uh, rock and such, and all that. Now, now the rock and such that's here, um, it's uh, volcanic inside underneath as well. So, you know, many, many, many millions of years, it's, it's been a long time since any of this has erupted. Okay, let's see, we're gonna go ahead and do our little cone geyser here. It's going to be our ground. And let's see, I'll just go ahead and come out this way, all the way across here. That's going to be my ground. I'm going to have this great big pool like of water underneath that, and it's going to be somewhere around here. Uh, let's see, and I'm going to, uh, sometimes they can share and sometimes they can have their own pool of water that's here. Now this comes in from a, like rain and such that just drips down. Um, in, in, anything that's from the top just ends up coming back down. Um, oh, right here I'm going to say, well let me go ahead, this is my little chamber where the magma, the, this is water, where the steam comes up. And sometimes it may have a, another um, little section, a little vein that comes up, and it might have another little something coming up from here. Um, and so this is my geyser. This is where it's going to be coming out here. See how it's going to be coming up here somewhere. We'll come back to that. So here I'm going to have a different type of geyser. 
it's not going to be the one that has the, the cone sticking up. This one is going to, um, see, we have our little channels here that are, go out. I could put another channel coming out this way here, possibly. So wherever you put some, you might have some little, little steam escaping after a while. So here we have, again, like I said, this is my uh, cone geyser. And over here, I'm going to have a fountain geyser. And it's going to come up differently. Let's see. It, it's going to come up from here, and it's going to spread outward. And uh, it'll be out over here some more. Maybe it comes in and kind of just snakes in and out. Okay, so that's going to be my, my um, fountain geyser. And um, I might have some, like I said, some little bitty um, steam coming off here. Over here, I'm going to say I might have a, some kind of pool. And this pool might vein off. It might vein off. It may have um, um, the little uh, channels on the side might just vein off and it, see this one might they might be sharing the same one so when it, it starts boiling inside there this little this is this is this pool might have a little extra steam coming out and might have some mud pots here who knows I'll say that's some mud pots there okay now my steam here as it's coming up it's gonna create like a little cloud here a big cloud back here and uh, you're going to still have more steam coming up. And you'll have more steam coming up from that. And uh, could have some more coming up for, from that. Okay, so that's my that's my geyser, and this is like a cloud, and this is some water that's going to be coming up. Um, here uh, is I'm going to have like a, a huge area that's going to have some stuff coming up. So they're going it's going to be coming up from here, and it's going to be coming out. And I have more cloud-like activity here. Some of it's water some of its water that just gushes out. Okay, so some, some of them it's just going outward. All right, um, who knows, maybe I have a, a little bit that's veined off. There we go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put me some little clouds that are forming over this area. Some little clouds. And uh, I'm going to have some land back here. It doesn't matter how the land is. Yeah, I could come up high or low. I'll just go ahead and put me some land. in the distance. So that'll be my land. This will be my sky. And um, we're ready to go. So let's see. I'm just to let you know that this is blue here, right? So this is the water and the water is coming out this way, right? It's just gushing up. This is that um, cone geyser and it's just gushing up. See, at inside the bottom, let's go, I'm going to go ahead and do some little circles with my white because this is going to be boiling water, right? It, when it turns to boiling water, it's going to go ahead and, and bubble up. So I'm going to have white and blue in there in circles. That's going to signal to you that this is boiling water. And I'm going to put a little bit more circles over with the white. 
because I'm going to come back with it. O over here, I'll do the same thing. I'd like to do my white first, put some little circles. I know you don't see it much, but you will see it once you start doing it. And some little circles in there. And you can put circles on top of circles so that you can't quite tell what it's doing. And we're going to come back and lightly color it over with the blue. Now here, the, the water is just gushing out this way and it's coming up. It's, it's just like walls of water just coming out. So we have our little walls of water kind of coming out. This one, it's all channeled right, coming right up that center chamber area. It goes straight up. Okay, I'm going to take some white again and put uh, some white stripes, strips, that to say, look, that's what, where it's coming out. It's just fanning out up here. This will be cloud area, so I'm going to just go ahead and put this as some cloud. I have some clouds here. A little white in my clouds. I'm going to come back over and color them with blue and gray. I'm going to put some gray in here. I'm going to put some gray in here because this is going to be steam. Just a little. This is steam that's here. This is steam. And up here is more hot water. This is hot water basically. Let me get this one I like to use. Up here is just hot water that's going straight up. So this will have water coming out, and that's steam. Oh, that's my, yeah, that's my gray. Sometimes I accidentally grab the silver, which is not bad. You can use silver in there, too. This is my steam. And uh, here I'll have some steam mixed up inside. I will have some steam in here inside with the water, of course, coming up. Just a little gray in there. Sometimes I'll put little black strips, but I'll put some some gray coming up. Um, the very bottom, I might put a little gray coming out. I usually like to get my blue and put a little. See, it's it's actually a little cloud. It's it's got more blue, gray in it than the blue because it's cloud. And you can add white in it too. Make it look billowy. All right, let's see if we have some water coming out here. All right, the magma down here. I like to get my warm colors. My warm colors reds and yellow. Oh, there's a bump here. Reds, yellow, and orange. So that you know it's the hot, this is our heat source. This is the heat source. This is the heat source. And I'm going to come back in and color most of it more orangey than yellow. It'll catch your eye on the artwork. You know it's the magma. Whereas on my other one, I just put it red. This is what's lying underneath. You know when you have volcanoes, you have active volcanoes, and you have uh, dormant volcanoes. That's when they're sleeping. So this one doesn't, this one really doesn't do much of anything. It's been many, many thousands and billions of years since it's done anything. It's that whole area. Okay, so that's that. So I'm going to come and this is my ground. And if you want to put some greenery in it, I did put some a little bit in my artwork and I'll put some browns. This is where the water is seeping in. Let me put a little bit, draw a little bit more 
the water seeps in and it comes down. That's where I had it. Since I have it drawn in marker, I might as well put it in a few in marker. Okay, so this would be blue if I had it. I could just tap a little blue. Look, I could put some of them in blue here. This is going to be a spring, a hot spring. This is a mud pot, so chances are I'll do blacks and browns. And I'm going to use some browns up here too. This is the ground. Maybe something comes down like this here. That's just my ground that I get to color. Maybe there's part of the mountainside or maybe it's mountain there, maybe it's not mountain. You know when we have these um, areas, they do have something called a caldera where you have the ground and it makes like a bowl. Like um, say there was an eruption that took place somewhere else and maybe some of the lava is, is used or something else is used and it'll just sink. It'll look like all of a sudden the ground just kind of sinks. This whole area is like a great big bowl. They call it basin, okay? But it's also a caldera to let you know. And let's see, I am gonna go ahead and put some either gray, I'm gonna put a little, little black here maybe just very slightly. You can color it however you want. I'm gonna put more right here. I'm gonna put cracks in my ground that seeps. Because you know that heat has to find some way to get up too. I'm gonna take my white and put my white in there. I have a few that are coming out. Uh, same thing I did with the black. I'm gonna put a few with the white. Sometimes I do that with yellow. Right here by this line, I'm gonna go ahead and put some little circles, like in the area. Because they do have rocky areas. It's like a porous rock. So that, that's in between, say, the magma and the rest of the ground. It's that porous, rocky area, which it doesn't usually go through unless it builds up enough pressure. And they study that. The people at Yellowstone study it. Actually, oh, one of the universities keeps tabs on it. All right. So um, this is going to be... Uh, Oh, I'm going to do some gray, some little gray here. So that could be little rocks that are there, all kinds of little rocks. And I'm going to put some gray down here. You can actually color it any of the colors you want. We're not going to the center of the earth, so I'm not gonna do the, the crust and the mantle and all that. I'm just gonna go ahead and just do the first few layers. Sometimes you can get a rock and it has different layers in it. That's just gonna be different layers of the soil. That's gonna be all in here, right? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use some browns and a peach. Maybe I'll put some peach little veins coming out. I know we have some in white. And then I might, uh, I'm not going to put anything else here. I'm going to go ahead and do a few sweeps across. This is my ground. where the little areas, some stuff that's seeping through, some of the steam that's seeping through. I'm gonna go ahead and look, I might put a little cloud or so above that because it's seeping through. Now where I'll, I'll put just a little blue in that area. 
because it's coming out, right? And the rest of it, I'll, I'll put brown. Brown and peach, no, not black, I don't want black. Browns and peaches. And you can put some greenery. However you want, you might want the side of a, a rock or part of it. It might be pools, maybe some of this, you have pools back here. Maybe they have pools back there. Maybe I have some of the tops are kind of yellowish because we saw all different colors when we were looking. It could have orange in there too, right? Some oranges. Some of those areas. I like to mix all my colors. How's your how's your coloring coming? Now again, like normal, when we get finished, if uh, you um, still need some more time, no problem. I'll let you have fun adding more and more and more. Now this is just the stone, the the not the stone, um, the minerals and such that's inside the water when it steams out some of it deposits here as it as it keeps going over over and over and over so it's just like deposit you know how when we have um, the winter time and we have icicles and the it trickles downward and we have icicles that go downward it's like the water just deposits more and more on the icicle as and the icicle grows and grows and grows same thing here except it's going upwards so the minerals go up the minerals go up i know we're just about time to be finished i'm going to go ahead and put some browns in here lightly do that on here and then I'm gonna take some greens and I could put some greens possibly in my brown maybe some places have green they might have some trees maybe you can put a tree maybe a tree in the distance but this is how I did my other one there we go See how you have your magma down here and your porous rock area. This is like the big plumbing system, right? This is like, this is where it's boiling up and bubbling up and it just bursts out. It just comes out of that cone geyser. And then this one is the fountain geyser where a whole bunch of water comes up. It looks like sheets of water just go up, right? And you have the ground and all. There we go. And that is our geyser. And of course we have the geyser and the volcano. This is what they look like. Take a moment and view your artwork. Turn and look at your neighbor's artwork. Notice the differences and the similarities between you and your neighbor's artwork. Thanks for joining me today. We learned so many things. We talked about uh, part two of the volcano lesson. So we talked about geysers found on Earth. And uh, we looked at where we find geysers and discussed the differences between geysers and volcanoes. We also created an artwork using lines, colors, and shapes and created our cross-section of a geysers or more than one geyser if you'd like. Um, as you go through your week, notice what you hear on uh, TV or the radio about um, the earth, about possibly volcanoes and maybe geysers. Um, if you notice something in books and magazines, enjoy the rest of your day. Can't wait to see you next time.